Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Glacia Rain, Intuitive Life Coach and Ascension Guide. Welcome to my channel, Ascension Consciousness. So this video today is going to be about the the solstice that is coming up here, which I like to describe as our cosmic birthday. So every year we have this opportunity to really take stock of what we've been through, um, take a look at our lives and see what it is that we want to shift. And this starts happening, you know, it happens actually during the eclipse season is when it really was happening a lot for people. And that's really in preparation to move up and move forward into these new timelines that lead to the new earth reality that everybody's really excited about experiencing and has been looking forward to. So some of the energies that we've been noticing, I spoke about in my last video, and that is the lightheadedness, the dizziness, the um, moments of feeling, you know, pressure in your head, or your body will heat up a lot or cool down a lot. And those are all different things that represent the different shifts that are taking place on a cellular level and also on an energetic level. So when you are going through these big changes, your body has to adapt and do something that it has never done before, which is why we get such a variety of different symptoms. And we end up having the headaches and the nausea off and on as your body detoxifies these lower energies. So part of moving into a different reality is making sure that your body is doing something different as well. And that's why we've been having the dietary changes where people are starting to develop food allergies. That's, that's also due to what they've been doing to the food. Um, for those of you who follow me already and have listened to my other stuff, you know I'm in holistic nutrition course right now. And I'm learning quite a lot about what's been done to our food and why we have this health crisis on our hands. So a lot of that's been orchestrated, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about the opportunity that we have to jump timelines. So when you're jumping timelines, some of the symptoms of jumping a timeline are that you have that Mandela effect. Things look different, feel different, people look different to you as well, right? You may even look different to yourself. I'm sure you've encountered this at some point in your ascension process, but you'll look in the mirror and you'll notice that you you don't really look like how you remember you looked, you know? And so it's really that you're shifting your form. And as you become a multidimensional seer, so you start to be able to see into multiple dimensions at the same time, you will notice different things about yourself. And we have this kind of um, negative self or lower self that looks a little bit different. And when you can see this in yourself, you look a little bit different to yourself. And that's when you're purging it up and out of your being, right? So we're shifting identities, letting go of our old personality. And that's what gives us this opportunity for this um, cosmic birthday, you know, this reset, this major transformation that we've really been looking forward to. Now we're used to every year kind of going through the solstice and then we go through this really intense period with the eclipses and the Lionsgate portal and then it kind of seems like things change, but then they don't really change. Well, that is what is changing now. So we're having all of this light come in. So light code activations, global awakening, and people are getting into the appropriate timelines that lead to their greatest expression. Now, it doesn't mean everybody's going into the same level of reality. And when we're talking about dimensions, we're not so much talking about different locations because the dimensions stack on top of each other, right? But we're talking about different vibrations. So the way that you perceive the world, two people can be in one location and have completely different outlooks on the world. And I know you've encountered that for sure. When you talk about the ascension, a lot of people, they look like a deer in the headlights where they're just frozen. You know, there's nothing for it to land on. So they, they don't know what to do. And often people will fall asleep or change the subject or just start talking about something completely different because, well, that's cognitive dissonance for you. You're witnessing cognitive dissonance when that happens. So the lightheadedness, when we are going through such an accelerated growth, the body is transforming really fast. And it's not just our body that's transforming. The earth is also transforming. And we know that the earth has her own spirit, right? We call her mother earth or mother nature. And she does have her own spirit. And she also has her own pain. And that's what I want to touch on right now. 
when we're dealing with a collective pain and we're dealing with the pain of the planet, you can imagine for those of you who are parents or even just friends, you know, friends may do this and or this may come out in you when a friend um, kind of disregards you. But when you do something nice for somebody and then they turn around and mistreat you as if it wasn't good enough, you can imagine how the planet is feeling, being very taken advantage of. And many of us are doing our best to preserve nature, to live naturally, to live sustainably. And there's a great movement that um, is leading in that direction. And that is, in fact, what the new earth reality is built in, a symbiotic relationship with the planet rather than a take, you know, a win-lose. So the planet right now is kind of losing because of what is being done. And so with that collective pain and the planetary pain as healers, as coaches, as guides, as shamans, as therapists, counselors, starseeds, indigos, all these different, um, however you want to express yourself or label yourself or identify with is fine. But the people who are carrying the new earth template tend to feel a level of responsibility to alter this pain and to shift this reality. And that's beautiful. However, the greatest way to do that is not to take on the pain yourself, but to transform the world by taking on more joy. So when you're joyful, the whole world around you starts to transform because you are offering a very high vibration. So while we pay attention to these horrible things in the world, minimize the time you spend paying attention to those unless you are actively shifting it. And even then, it's important to make the most of your time be focused on things that lead you to happiness and joy and connection and feeling healthy and whole, right? Because whatever we give our attention to, we grow. Now, again, I'm not saying disregard the things that are not working in the world because we're all here making change, but we change what we can. And that means to make a change, you have to hold a higher vibration. You don't drop down into the level of the problem because then you become part of the problem, right? So this this uh, solstice is offering us the opportunity to figure out what that change is and how we can become happier um, as individuals. We can increase the happiness in our lives, each of us on an individual level. And then that alters the entire collective expression. So it's not about judging others or making others wrong or creating this division between the people. That's naturally going to happen based on everybody's choices. Their free will is leading them into the timelines that are appropriate for their free will expression. A lot of that has to do with beliefs and perceptions and the willingness to work, do the inner work, you know, and people have asked me in the past what inner work is. So I want to talk just briefly about that. Inner work is the tough stuff when you bring light into the darker places within yourself. That means acknowledging where you're not in integrity, acknowledging where you're not um, being authentic, and acknowledging where you are being hypocritical. That's kind of tough inner work, right? A lot of people don't want to feel like they've done something wrong, and so they will live in a state of denial around it, but then it'll show up in the world around them for that mirror reflection with others because everything that you need to work out is going to be mirrored back to you. We're mirrors for each other. That's a beautiful contribution that we have toward each other in this reality. So figuring out what makes you happy, what makes you joyful, and then knowing that because these systems of enslavement or domination or control or whatever you like to call them, the powers that be, are broadcasting out certain frequencies that can alter your mood. And these frequencies, there's a lot of research that's been done on brainwave patterns and the biology and physiology of the human body. So how our body interacts with these frequencies is known. It's not something that is like, oops, wow, we threw the whole collective off. It's not. It's like, okay, how can we have domination and control different groups of people the way that we want? And there's a lot of different ways through TV programming and um, a lot of violence. So when you're looking at, um, especially with like video games and things like that, there's a trend in, in shows and video games and movies also around um, violence and separation, like getting the best for yourself, which is the service to self behavior, which doesn't really work. When you serve others, you're also part of that collective that you're serving. And so it's a win-win. That's the new earth reality, right? 
And those that carry the new earth template, this is a natural thing for you. And those that do not have the opportunity to awaken to that and to benefit from the people who are anchoring that into the collective reality. But when you're having these frequencies broadcast out through the Wi-Fi, through the TVs, through the electrical harness of your house, um, and you, through the radio, you know, things like that, you have to really pay attention to what triggers you into feeling aggravated or angry and then notice if it's something in your mind or if it's in fact an energy around you, an energetic force that's external from you. We can also get irritated by our mind and the meanings that we apply and that's from the subconscious and that's also something to pay attention to and we've gone over this in past videos but I'm going to repeat it just in case there's anybody new here and that is to ask yourself what do you make this mean? So if you feel that you're upset, you say, okay, what is this energy that I'm feeling? You know, is it anger? Is it sadness? What is this? And then you identify what you're making it mean. What do I make this mean about the world that I live in? That it's not safe, that I don't belong in it. And then you figure out or that there's no hope or that we're doomed or things like that, you know, and then you figure out what you make it mean about yourself. Okay, and when you follow those steps, it'll lead you to what is actually making you feel bad because when you're triggered or upset, it's within you. It's something in the external that reflected it within you, but it's a stuck point within you that has been hit and only you have the power to shift it. That's why I say triggers are opportunities. They really are opportunities for your advancement because now you know it's you're completely aware that there is something stuck in your energy field because you just hit it like a brick wall and you feel upset, right? And so when you follow that process and then you get into the absolute truth about things, you can see where your subconscious mind may have a belief in place that is not working for you. So that's going to be really important over the next week, you know, today, tomorrow, the next day, and today's June 20th. And so it's really important to take accountability for your feelings and then do something about it because you are the only one that has the power to do that. And that may be working through something on your own. And that may be reaching out for help from others. Okay, none of us are actually truly alone. We're all in this together. And so as we are um, moving forward into the unity consciousness grid, this solstice is going to really shake things up. The month, the whole month of June is actually, but it's not even going to stop there. It's just going to keep moving forward because of course we have all these different gateways and opportunities coming up and all these different alignments with different planetary bodies. So I'm not going to go into astrology or anything like that. There are fantastic astrologers out there. I'm not one of them. So I like to sometimes listen to these other ones and take all of that stuff, take it or leave it. With anything that comes across your path, if you resonate with it, it's for you. If you don't resonate with it, it's not for you at that time. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means it's not right for you at that moment and you can come back to it later or not at all. So really, as you move forward, it's your opportunity to develop your discernment around what you take into your belief system, what you start to create your reality with because your beliefs do create your reality and your beliefs become beliefs because they were a thought that was thought so many times, right? It's not like, like you hear it one time and then you just automatically believe it. You'll think about it and you'll come back to it and you'll think about it another time. Something will trigger you to think about it and pretty soon it does become a belief. Or if the people around you are believing it, it's really easy to have a collective belief too. And actually it's kind of challenging to go against that collective belief, which we're seeing in the collective right now with the division of people's beliefs around health. I'll leave it there. So for this solstice, it's, we know that the AI is doing all kinds of stuff, um, whether it's humans behind it or it's artificial intelligence behind it is, I don't really know because humans can control AI and AI can also control AI. And it's important to sometimes check out of your devices, put your phone down, go out into nature, like we go for a walk in nature, and then we get our phones out and take a bunch of pictures and things like that. And sometimes it's important to just leave your phone behind and go be a human again, go connect with the natural elements in nature that 
if you have your phone in your pocket, you've got a disruptor in your pocket, right? And so I'm encouraging all of you over the solstice to take a little bit of time. And I'm not saying like, be unavailable if that's, you know, not what you want to do. But just take a little bit of time to be in the natural world without electronics. Give that a try. We got to start getting back into this natural way of living and really connecting with the planet because the planet is running this ascension process. So if you're going through the ascension process, you want to be connected in with the planetary energies and start to develop a relationship of gratitude and respect with the planet in the greatest way possible. And this is a really wonderful time to do that because when we have these specific alignments and this one is presenting us the opportunity for a major timeline jump. So if you're on your electronics looking at things that you don't like or things that upset you, are you really going to jump timelines or are you going to go back into the same set of timelines that you've been in in this reality that's been pretty upsetting over the last year? So if you're tapping out of electronics and TV and media and all of that for a little bit and you're communing with nature, you are most likely going to make a large timeline jump. And that is what you want to do right now because as we're moving through dimensions, we actually move through degrees in dimensions. We raise our awareness and level up, right? So you, it's like taking up steps, taking steps up in a dimension before you just shift into another dimension. And we're actually going multi-dimensional, not just fifth dimension, right? So we're, we're building our light body and gaining access to our light body again, which is multi-dimensional. Our light body isn't fifth dimensional. It's all of the dimensions, right? So we have layers to our light body. And those are starting to be cleared out of any attachments and implants and overlays and things like that, inserts, right? And so... It's going to be very important. What you do with your time and attention and focus right now determines the timelines that you will shift into. So if you want to make the biggest timeline jumps into the new earth reality and into your multidimensional awareness, do things that support that. So finding a way to get into gratitude, love, appreciation, being unconditional with your love. And that doesn't mean accepting abuse or anything like that. It means seeing that people are hurt and that that's why they lashed out because they're hurting. And then you can love them and it doesn't mean be abused by them or let them into your life, but you can love them from a distance and acknowledge that that person did that because they hurt. Now, I'm not talking about staying in toxic relationships. I don't want to promote that. I would never promote that right? If you are in a toxic relationship or you are being abused by somebody, it is your obligation to your own self to develop that self-respect and self-care and walk away from something that hurts you, right? And find a different place to be or a different way to be. And there's no shame, blame, or guilt for being in that situation in the first place, okay? It's not your fault. It's sometimes things happen and the choices we make lead us into experiences that we didn't realize it was going to lead into. And the beautiful thing is that you can make a different choice in every single moment, right? And some of you may say, well, I'm stuck living in this position. I don't have money to clear anything and I can't shift it. Well, instead of saying I can't, ask yourself and ask the universe, how can I shift this? What's one thing I can do today to shift this? And you might receive the information that meditate for a little bit, meditate, clear your energy field, clear whatever is in your field that is aligning you with that experience because we move through life having these different lessons. And when you complete a lesson, you move on from it. You don't stay in it. So if you're in a situation that isn't working for you, ask yourself, what do I have to learn here? What can I learn here to shift this? How can I shift this? How can this be different? How can I get closer to a, a reality and a life that nourishes my body, mind, and soul. And when you open up these questions to the universe, you're not sitting there speculating and thinking. You're allowing these energies to come into your life to demonstrate. The universe likes to communicate with you by demonstrating in the physical or the mental even. You can get good ideas, but it'll typically come through another person or you'll be aligned with a book or an experience or an opportunity that is the answer to that question, right? You don't have to figure this all out by yourself. There are forces of light 
that are here supporting us all the time. And you don't have to call on them individually, but you do have to stand in your sovereignty, right? So you know that I'm a sovereignty coach and I love helping people be sovereign in their spiritual body, in their mental body, in their physical body, in their emotional body. I love helping people get their greatest life possible. And sometimes you do need help from somebody like me. So that's where I'm going to leave it off today. And one last thing that I want to say is that my website, um, for those of you who are trying to book a session and encounter problems, sometimes people have said to me, I've tried like six different times and the page always goes blank. Well, the information that I bring forward and the sessions that I do, like I said, help people get sovereign from these systems and I get a lot, like massive amounts of electronic harassment and blocking through my website. So if you're trying to book a session and you can't, you can email me and then we'll set it up manually. So that way you don't have to, you know, be wanting support from me and then feel like it's a sign you're not supposed to get it because that's just an artificial synchronicity if it's that, if that's the case, you know, because like I said earlier, the AI can do stuff. And then these different forces at work, you can see all the censoring that's happening, which is why I try to keep it pretty, um, pretty mellow on my YouTube channel. But all the censoring and massive people getting kicked off of these platforms for sharing the truth or for helping people understand that they have way more power than they think they have. And um, that could be a reason why, you know, and like if, if people have entities attached to them or they have sole contracts to not become sovereign, that would create a blockage in trying to get support from me, right? So if you are trying to get support from me, be persistent, please. And my email address to email me is ascension at glacierain.com. And that's also on my website. So please feel free to contact me there. And um, we'll go from there. So much love, family. You are doing so spectacular. The shifts that are happening right now are happening because of you. They're happening because of your higher aspects. They're happening because of our star teams. And they're happening because of divine timing. And divine timing is according to vibrational readiness. And so many of you are so ready for this new earth reality. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you for everything that you're doing. All of you are making a tremendous difference in the shifting of the collective timelines and in the well-being of all of the people and the animals and the plants and the earth. So thank you. You're amazing. I love you. Have a wonderful solstice and I will be back soon.